On this episode of the DC Eric Show, we go back to 2010 with Afterburner Climax for the Xbox 360 on Xbox Live Arcade and developed by Sega AM2 and released by Sega. I played Afterburner Climax off and on since I bought it and it might have the greatest graphics, but like its older games, I thought it was a tad difficult. Sometime in the summer, my cousin Brandon decided to bring this game back to life after not being played for a while. He went through the game with no problems and even grabbing me a few achievements and some unlockables. Well, I decided to play the game again to grab the rest of the achievements. Alright, now it's time for a little history about Afterburner. Afterburner was released back in 1987 for the arcade and was one of the very first games created by Yu Suzuki. If you didn't know already, was the creator of a lot of Sega arcade classics and is known as one of the leading developers through the history of video games. He now works for his own development company, which is a subsidiary to Sega called YSNet. The last game he worked on was Shemu City, which is now cancelled and had no helping hand in the creation of Afterburner Climax or Afterburner Black Falcon. Afterburner was soon followed by a sequel, Afterburner 2, once again released for a variety of consoles, but most notably the Sega Genesis and Arcade back in 1987. It was released a few months after the original. The game wasn't really a sequel, but more an upgrade to the original Afterburner. Afterburner 2 would include three extra levels, totaling to 21 levels, and the game also included new enemies. There was also a slight update to the gameplay which would add a throttle that would add more speed, and the weapons could now shoot faster. There is other games that Sega created which claim to be sequels to Afterburner, and that's because they used the same concepts of gameplay from the Afterburner series. G-Lock Air Battle uses the same sort of gameplay, but the camera can change to third-person perspectives if the aircraft is locked on by an enemy missile. The main character uses a new aircraft called the A-8M5, which later in the game can be upgraded to the A-8M6. G-Lock Air Battle then would see a sequel by the name of Strike Fighter for the arcade in Japan, which changed its name to Afterburner 3 for the home release in Japan, America, and Europe. This game was released for the Sega CD and was painted as an awful game which had horrible graphics and bad gameplay. The game had new cinematic sequences and the options to choose between cockpit view and third person view. The gameplay changes from not only shooting flying enemies but also shooting on ground bases. The game also includes new music with altered music from Afterburner 2. Another game would be released for the arcade in Sega Saturn by the name of Sky Target and was advertised for its similarities to the original Afterburner. The player now has a choice to choose between four aircraft which include the F-14D Super Tomcat, Rafale M, F-16C, and F-15S. Things that have been removed include the barrel roll and the throttle which increased and decreased speed in the game. Also a new feature would be introduced which would allow the player to select between two stages. Well, Afterburner then would again return to the arcades in 2006 using the same name for the first time in 13 years, called Afterburner Climax, which would get released for the Xbox 360 and PS3 in 2010. In 2007, Afterburner Black Falcon would get released exclusively for the PSP. In Afterburner Black Falcon, there is new multiplayer modes, single player modes, and there is three characters in the game that fly their own plane. Afterburner Climax generally uses the same gameplay from the original Afterburner, with many new features. This game is now faster and now includes a Climax mode which slows down the game for a periodic moment, while pressing the RB button. The barrel roll returns and your plane now has a break which can be used by pressing the LT button. The game includes many unlockable cheats which can be viewed in X options, as well as the option to select between five different paint jobs. Brought back from Sky Target is the option to select between two stages at certain parts of the game. You have the choice to choose between three aircrafts, which include F 14D Super Tomcat, F A 18E Super Hornet, and F 15E Strike Eagle. The game also contains a score attack mode, which is where you compete for the highest score on the leaderboard. And you can also obtain badges depending on what you do during gameplay. The game also contains a training mode, which will help you understand how to play the game. The game also includes new high-definition graphics, 15 levels, and Xbox Live achievements. What I liked about the game was its gameplay, which is similar to the original Afterburner. The graphics in the game almost look photorealistic, which I haven't really seen in many Xbox 360 games. 
The gameplay is fun, but does get pretty repetitive if played often, and the difficulty can drive you insane even on the easiest difficulty. What made this game fun was going after the achievements, and there is also unlockables which will make the game easier. I wouldn't really say this is the sort of game that you would play often, but it would be for the achievements. After that, it's like the arcade game it's based off of, and generally you would go back every now and then to get the nostalgia or compete for the highest score. As said, the difficulty is pretty hard, but that doesn't mean getting the achievements are, because with unlockable cheats it will help you get the achievements faster. Also, the barrel roll can be a bit of a pain because you are motionless when trying to dodge an enemy missile. There are three chapters in the game, and depending on how you play the game, you'll unlock one of three endings. There is also an online and offline leaderboard, which is where your score will be placed. There are also rankings in the game which will judge you on how well you play, and some of the cheats in the game will help you get that better ranking. Well, I guess I've come to the end of the show. This game's graphics were amazing and not anything like I've seen on the Xbox 360. Playing for achievements is what will make you enjoy the game and also the nostalgia that Afterburner has always been good for. You may also want to play this game to unlock all the cheats which will make this game more playable. The difficulty was a tad much even on the easiest difficulty and the barrel roll was an annoyance. And in order to actually enjoy the game you have to use the unlockable cheats. The game includes an online and offline leaderboard which may add fun for arcade fanatics. If you would like to get your hands on Afterburner Climax, you can get it for 800 Microsoft points from the Xbox Live Store. If you would like to get the original Afterburner and the sequels, you can find them on eBay or your local game shop. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the DC Eric Show and come back to see another game I couldn't keep my hands off of.